So a typical company here knows exactly what it targets it. We know a ton about the biology of the target. And I also have a way to identify is this target working or not. What you then typically do is that you develop something so that we can have a machine, a robot, test this on small plates. So you have these small plates with maybe 512 or even a 2048 or so, or so small wells. And in each of those wells, I might have uh, one copy of a cell or something. And then I'm measuring, for instance, how much is my ion channel conducting or do I see fluorescence of this particular molecule if it's binding a molecule. So a so-called assay, a simple way to test is things working or not? Am I binding or ideally do I have the right biological effect? And then I just start testing. So if you're a large pharmaceutical company, you typically have databases of many, many, many drugs, maybe 100,000, 200,000, even half a million drugs. So these are just small, relatively standard compounds that we have produced. Every drug you produce costs a bit the first time you produce it, but it's not that expensive to create more of it. And the idea is that if I now have a new target, uh, I can take this drug and I can go in. I might not test it against my entire database, but let's say that I test it against 300,000 compounds or so. And you know, if I'm lucky, I might even get a hit. So maybe this is an actual example that a colleague of mine was involved in a few years ago. This is a compound called lactamase. The screen size, the number of compounds we tested here was 300,000. Unfortunately, I didn't get any hits. Ah, too bad. Can try it again. No. At this point, your boss is not going to be overly happy because we are talking about actual chemical tests by a robot here. Each, even, if, even if we own these chemicals in-house, every test here probably costs in the ballpark of $1. So in this actual study, people wasted $300,000 on one test where we didn't get a single hit. We don't have a clue literally wasted $300,000. Oops. Uh, there was another molecule, Curtain, uh, screened against a slightly smaller database. In this case, they found 140 hits. So here the scientists are really happy. But these, just these two studies is half a million dollars, probably run over a couple of days. There, is, there are two important things to learn here. First, we're not guaranteed to see any hits. Uh, you can't afford to test everything. There are probably databases here that are 5 million compounds or so, but you can't afford to spend $5 million once a week because you would be fired from the company. So we have to try to be wise and just hope that we can have a small set and maybe find something. The something is the other keyword. I don't need to find a super plus plus good hit here. Sure, if I do, I'm going to be happy, but all I care about is finding something. You know, these 146 compounds, that's something to work with. I'm going to look at them, bring them up on screen and see what are the common factors. Based on that, can I find other molecules like those? The only part I don't want to end up with is the first line here, because if I don't have a clue, I don't have a clue. So finding hits is easier than you think. Um, it can be harder than we think too. But we don't need something great here. We just need something to work with, and 146 is certainly something to work with. But what will we do for lactamase when well, we don't have anything to work with? We can't keep testing more and more. Uh, so then we might have to use other techniques, in particular computers.